If you look through IMDb's list of top 250 movies, you will find a great deal of movies about gangsters, <laughs> cowboys, love, death, ambition, family, sex, war, movies, and Robert De Niro's frown. But what about food? In the entire list, only one movie is about food. One. Out of 250 movies that are supposed to represent the best, and by extension the most universal movies, only one of them approaches food. Which is odd, because food is so universal. I bet you're eating some while you watch this video right now. I'm not saying food isn't in most of these movies, but when it is, it's either decor or a metaphor for something else, such as the lunches in the breakfast club, where each lunch represents the stereotype society relegates each student to, or the milk and clockwork orange, symbolizing how drinking milk makes you evil. But it's rare that food is tackled as a subject in of itself. In this list, our only contender is Ratatouille. Now, I think most people would agree that the IMDb Top 250 isn't the end-all authority on the best of the best of film. But that doesn't change the lack of great films about food. There are some subjects, like food, that are universal in our lives yet underrepresented in film. Now, I understand why there's few great movies about taxes, or sleeping, or uh, taking a shit, but food? It's odd because food looks so damn good on video. There's millions and billions of views on food videos online. So why the lack of great food cinema? Is food too boring and shallow a subject to make an entire feature film covering it? Or is it too broad and universal? Is it because the medium of film doesn't include taste and smell so there's something inherently uncinematic about food? For many filmmakers, food might be too mundane, too daunting, or too shallow a subject matter to make a feature film out of. But for Zuzo Itami, the writer and director of Tampopo, food is everything. No movie tackles the subject of food as thoroughly and playfully as Tampopo. The films in the IMDb Top 250 often show food as a means to get at something else. Tampopo shows food as a means to examine food and everything else. In this film, food is the means for examining many of the themes and subjects covered in the movies on that list, including love, death, ambition, family, sex, movies, and so much more. Aye, aye. The main narrative of Tampopo tells the story of two trucker cowboys and their mission to help a widow named Tampopo make a ramen restaurant the best that it can be. Here, food is a vehicle for Tampopo's ambition, the pursuit of excellence through the perfect bowl of ramen. Throughout their journey, Tampopo and the cowboys enlist the help of other ramen masters to improve individual aspects of a ramen shop, from the broth to the interior design. As each ramen master is responsible for individual aspects of the ramen, Itami draws the parallel between ramen making and filmmaking, where masters of respective crafts come together to create one experience greater than the sum of each part, a communal artistic expression. The story also places a heavy emphasis on food's power to bring people together. In this scene, food is used as a means to communicate familial love and the creation of new connections. In this scene, a group of beggars find common interest in the appreciation of the finer foods. Food's relation to love is most thoroughly explored through the central relationship between Goro and Tampopo. As Goro trains Tampopo in the art of ramen making, their relationship deepens. With each meal they share together, they become more intimate and vulnerable with one another. Itami makes the carnal connection between food and sex, which is most prevalent in the gangster subplot, where the man in the white suit and his mistress engage in a series of uh, unique sexual activities involving food. By directly connecting food to sex, the role of food as a physical pleasure is emphasized. These two stories, of cowboys and gangsters, are haphazardly interrupted by a series of vignettes, each one exploring a different societal taboo surrounding food. In one, a group of Japanese women take an etiquette class, learning the correct way to eat spaghetti in America, according to the instructor, as quietly as possible. 
して音を立てないことです。They are interrupted by the loud slurping of an American, which starts a tidal wave of slurping among the women until even the instructor gives in to her desires. In another, a junior employee breaks hierarchical barriers by proving himself more culinarily cultured than his senior executives. And in yet another, a kid gives in to ice cream despite his mother's restrictions. Vignette by vignette, a message solidifies. There is absurdity in conforming too strictly to certain rules binding down our appetites. And the only way to truly enjoy your meal and, by extension, life, is to break free of them and indulge. 食べることにはさまざまな禁止があり、禁止があればそれを破るという行為があるわけで、それを利用してさまざまなサスペンスを作り出すことができる。This doesn't mean that breaking these rules is always the right thing to do. In some contexts, it could even cost you your health or a smack on the wrist. After all, crossing that line wouldn't be as appealing if there weren't any consequences. Juzo Itami has a filmography filled with subjects that seem like they'd make the most boring movies ever tax audits, grocery stores, funerals, food. The subjects of Juzo Itami's films are facets of life that are encountered so often that they can be considered mundane. Yet, his films are some of the most entertaining I've ever seen. How does he do it? How does he make the mundane interesting? We already partly answered that question. Itami makes a subject like food interesting by examining how food relates to societal rules and human behavior. He digs into the authenticity of the subject by tackling unique angles in which the subject relates to human needs and desires. The next step in turning bland subject matter into a rich and flavorful film is to simmer in research and pre-production until the preparation has clearly soaked through to the final result. Because Tampopo is a film about food, a large part of pre-production was dedicated to just that: finding the perfect tableware, doing camera tests to find out how to make ramen look tastiest, finding an egg yolk that was firm enough to not break while it passed from actor's mouth to mouth. The final contender being Yoruran eggs, chosen by Saiko Ogawa. Tempo's food stylist. A food stylist's job is to prepare and arrange food on a film set, a profession that was virtually non-existent in the Japanese film industry before Tempo. So, I don't have any skills. But I have to do everything that Itami did. And so, he said he wanted to do it in the same way. As well as finding the famous egg yolk, she's responsible for preparing over 600 bowls of ramen for Tampopo. The ramen itself would vary from scene to scene depending on what was needed for the story. Sometimes the noodles had to be emphasized. Sometimes the broth. Sometimes it had to look heavenly. Sometimes disgusting. In the Charlie Chaplin-inspired rice omelet cooking scene, while the wide shots showcase the comedic performance of Ai Takami, whenever they cut to a close-up of the food, these are the hands of pro chef Kikuchi. The same trick is used in the turtle execution scene, where as soon as the actor leaves the frame, he re-emerges, head cut off from the frame, swapped out for professional chef. With this simple trick, Itami doesn't have to choose between sacrificing either impressive culinary displays or the performance of a trained actor. Because he did his research, the film is grounded in authenticity. Having one of the first movie food stylists and pro chefs prepare the dishes on and off camera is visually impressive and more authentic to the story. Food is a subject matter that is underrepresented in film yet ubiquitous in our lives. Now let's go deeper down the rabbit hole of cinematically underrepresented universal experiences. What about grocery stores? Eleven years and six movies after Tampopo, Juzo Itami directs Supermarket Woman, the love story of a man, a woman, and a supermarket. Just as he found the whole range of human struggle and triumph in food, Itami does the same with a local grocery store. Earlier, I mentioned there were cowboys and gangsters in Tampopo. Westerns and gangster films weren't the only genres that Tami played around with. Both Tampopo and Supermarket Woman are Japanese fusions of a whole palette of American genre films. The movies follow the story beats of westerns, noirs, silent comedies, romantic comedies, gangster films, boxing films, and action films. Itami bends genres at will, choosing pieces from different genres to create an original dish. This is part of Itami's secret to making the unremarkable remarkable. Genre movies are constructed out of expected story beats. We are all familiar with. 
with the training scene in a sports movie, the hit in a gangster movie, and the meet cute in a romantic comedy. Jizo Itami uses our familiarity of these tropes to introduce us to the subject matter that he is passionate about. He reframes the training scene into a ramen chef training scene has the gangster's dying words be about the proper preparation of wild boar guts, and the meet cute between a shopping savvy housewife and a supermarket manager. This mundane subject matter mashed together with these dramatic story beats creates a juxtaposition that adds humor to the film, while also serving as refreshing takes on familiar plot points. This humor and novelty helps in making the everyday more interesting. Just as Itami uses genre story beats to emphasize his subjects, he also uses every production category. The filmmaking in Tampopo is fully committed to showing off food in all its glory. Unfortunately, the two primary senses involved in eating are absent from the cinematic experience. You won't find much joy in tasting or smelling a movie. Along with the look of a meal, using the right sounds can go a long way in conveying the experience of eating. The sound design in Tampopo specifically emphasizes the sounds of eating with the slurping, smacking, swallowing all cartoonishly turned up to the max. In Supermarket Woman, Itami fulfills the cinematic potential of a supermarket, using the sounds of those big panel doors to give impact to a character's entrance, or the back and forth tossing of assembly line cards as a visual proxy for a back and forth argument. The products on the store shelves create a bright color scheme that enhances the film's optimistic tone. And of course, the emotions would not hit nearly as hard if it weren't for jazz musician and composer Toshiyuki Honda's score, whose work in Supermarket Woman ranges from bubbly and jazzy to operatic and resonant. And then there's the small stakes of Tampopo, which would not feel nearly as monumental if not for the choice of Liszt's Les Préludes, which by the way also has roots in the Western genre, being used extensively in the Lone Ranger radio series. Now to continue our story. Bob Strong had just finished telling Nancy Wynn why he had returned to Clearwater. Juzo Itami finds the drama, the comedy, and the beauty out of parts of life that are universal to the point where they could be considered stale. He makes these subjects interesting by digging into their inherent authenticity, meticulously researching, using the language of genre cinema, and using every aspect of the cinematic medium from sound to color to music in a way that elevates the subject matter specifically. Through ramen restaurants or supermarkets, the characters in each film are in the pursuit of excellence, whether it be the best ramen shop in Tokyo or the most customer-friendly supermarket in Japan. Going on that journey with them, seeing how each little facet of the store is improved is fascinating. There are these scenes where a character teaches another the process of doing something, something that a lot of people would write off as boring or trivial. But under the tutelage of these characters, they describe the intricacies of this act with astonishing clarity and meaning, revealing the steps that go into properly serving a bowl of ramen or the importance of a well-run grocery store. This is also what Itami is doing with his movies. He's showing us reality, then going, look at all the color, flavor, drama, and comedy that exists here. Although these movies are entertaining, escapist films, they don't fetishize escapism, instead encouraging the viewer to make the most out of their reality. It makes you think about the circumstance that you're in, and how despite seeming mundane, could be filled to the brim with flavor and color if you're willing to pour yourself into it. With movies, you have the ability to watch the most extreme dramatic circumstances that illustrate universal human truths. Atemi makes the subjects mundane but keeps the presentation dramatic. By setting a western in a ramen restaurant or romantic comedy in a supermarket and still infusing the film with as much drama as any film in the IMDb Top 250, the themes and observations are just as emotionally poignant, arguably even more because of their direct connection with our lives. Thank <laughs> you.